Hello and welcome to everybody on Cloud Fitness. So today's video is in continuation to Azure Data Factory interview questions play series where we are discussing different questions that might be asked in Azure Data Factory interviews. So the first question related to uh, this particular play series is what are the different ways to execute pipelines in Data Factory? So this particular question is usually asked to check how much hands-on do you have in the data factory like do you know different modes in which we can execute the pipelines or not so we do have debug mode we do have manual triggering and also triggering through the triggers right so we have already discussed triggers in our previous video so let's go back to the uh, pipeline that we have created in the first interview question play series so this is the pipeline that we have created copy data now on the top if you see that you have an option for the debug over here so if you execute this particular option you will actually see that your pipeline runs in the debug mode so this is the first option and you should know that you do have debug option and then the second option is the trigger now where you can go ahead and manually trigger the particular pipeline and the third option is if you click on this new edit option that we we have created this trigger one in our previous uh, uh, in our previous video right on the data factory where we were explaining what are the different types of trigger now that time we created one trigger which was your blob events trigger right so using this trigger also you can go ahead and execute your pipeline so now right now you can see that in debug mode your pipeline has been successfully executed similarly if i go ahead and i click on trigger now then also you can see that my pipeline will actually start running and you can see that it has started running so these are the three ways in which you can go ahead and you know you can start uh, you know running your pipelines and next question that we have is what are the arm templates so when i say arm template so uh, talking about ARM templates in Azure, specifically in Azure Data Factory, so you must know that whatever code that you write. So this is not, uh, this is mostly a drag and drop, uh, um, a drag and drop service, basically. So you do not have to write a code, but at the same time, it is essentially a code only which you are trying to do. You are, uh, you know, it is visually giving you a comfort of not writing a code and doing a drag and drop and creating a pipeline but essentially it is a code right so uh, whenever you create any kind of pipeline so let's say you have created this copy pipeline what happens is everything gets converted in form of your json file right so those json files are nothing but your arm templates so let's say in fact if i go back over here and i show you you can see that on the left hand on the right hand side you have this option of code right this curly braces if you click over here you can actually see that my copy data activity is present here in form of code right everything like whatever is there my source my sync the configurations what i have kept for source and sync everything is there in this json file so what does this json file this json file is nothing but the arm um, template right so whatever code you write in azure data factory it essentially gets converted in form of javascript object notation that includes your data sets that includes your link service that includes all the configurations that you have set up so that is called your arm um, templates and then the second question uh, that comes along whenever you answer the first one is that why what are they used for why do you need arm um, templates right so in data factory, let's say you have a data factory in your dev environment, right? Now you want to migrate the code from dev to production or dev to your UAT or from UAT to production, whatever the configuration of your project is. Now in that case, you will not go and manually create all the pipelines in your, uh, you know, higher environments right you will not create pipelines in uat manually and then production manually so you need something to deploy so all this code gets converted in form of arm templates which you can go ahead and use those files to simply uh, you know deploy to higher environments you just create an automated uh, you know ci cd pipelines which through which you can actually uh, deploy these arm templates 
into your de into your UAT or even your production environment. And in, in fact, for this, especially, uh, you know, this is a whole lot of a, it, it is really a big topic in case you want to go ahead and, you know, know more about this. I have already created a video. If you see over here, Azure Data Factory, right? I have only created one video over here. And this is your regarding your Azure Data Factory uh, only continuous integration and continuous deployment where I have mentioned, uh, you know, a lot about the whole process end to end. How does it happen? So you will also see, you know, about the ARM templates and everything in this particular video. I do recommend watching it so that you will understand uh, in depth if uh, you are interested. So if you see even in this particular video, you can see that uh, this is how your, you know, each and every folder gets created. And these folder has code in form of your JSON files right and the same json file you go ahead and in fact you can see uh, you know you have dot json in the similar way you go you can go ahead and uh, you know deploy the same json file for the higher environments that is actually called your arm templates and what they are used for now the next question that we have here is how do you deploy data factory code to the higher environment so this is also you know, very much asked question because a person who has worked on data factory would definitely know this. And um, in fact, you should be able to describe it in detail. And definitely I provided you the link for the video as well. In case you want to go in depth, you can go in depth and understand end to end how does it work. But here for uh, the interview question, I'll explain that wherever you are there in the data factory, your data factory is actually integrated to the code repository. Right. So if I go back to the data factory over here, you will see that in this data factory on the left hand side, there is an option of setup code repository. Right. So let's say if I click on the setup code repository and I can select any, uh, you know, my my account details for DevOps. So let's say I am linking my data factory to DevOps and I provide all the configurations over here. And then uh, basically it will be linked to a particular repository, right? So once it is linked to repository, I'm not going to show it over here because it is a really big topic and you can go ahead and watch the previous video for this. Now, once you set up this code repository, what you go ahead and do is you create a feature branch, right? You can go ahead, you can, uh, you know, explain it in a way that you will go ahead and first create a feature branch. Feature branch is nothing but a branch where you will execute your own code, right? It will not affect your development. It will not affect your UAT. It will not affect your production. So you have a feature branch, you create your code over there, and then you create a pull request to merge your code from your feature branch to the development branch. And after that, your code is present in the development branch. And uh, once it is present in the development branch, you can come back to the data factory, click on publish option. So when I say click on publish option, if you see over here, here there is an option of publish all. So once you are, once you have selected the code repository and your code is merged to the development branch, then what happens is you can come here, click on publish all. The moment you click on publish all, ARM templates will be generated in the repository. So whatever repository is linked over here, right? Those ARM templates will automatically, once uh, you know you set up a CI/CD pipeline for it, whenever you have any change in the ARM templates for development, you can pass on the code to the higher environments. So in case you did not understand this particular thing, you can go ahead and watch the video. I, I am focusing on that particular video because it is really important if you want to understand this whole concept end to end. It is like really big. Now, uh, this is the way how you, you know, uh, deploy your code to the higher environment. I tried to tell it in very short uh, way. And if you see, this is how you actually do it, right? You create a feature branch, then you kind of, you know, manually, then you kind of, uh, you know, whenever you have created your feature branch, you push your code to the higher environment. It can be master, it can be development. Once it is pushed, you come back to the data factory, click on publish option and this publish option will actually deploy ARM templates. This line, what you see over here, generate ARM templates, right? So this generate ARM templates is doing nothing, but in fact, it is actually trying to 
generate the ARM template. So the moment your ARM template is generated, it, you can deploy it to the QA and production. So this is one way of doing CI CD, which I have explained. There is another new way of doing CI CD, which is this, where you build your NPM package. So this thing, I think you can ignore for now if you are a beginner. In case you are not a beginner, you can definitely go ahead and check this, check this option as well. Now, uh, apart from this, what are the other questions that might come to you? So the next question is, what are the difficulties that you have faced while copying the data from on-prem to cloud? Right. So let's say you are, uh, you know, trying to copy the data from your SQL server to your cloud storage. La let's say ADLS Gen 2 in terms of Azure. Right. Now, in this case, definitely there will be problems. So now here interviewer actually wants to understand that what kind of problems you have faced, right? If you have worked on it, then you would have definitely faced few issues. So he's trying to understand what kind of problems you have faced and how did you resolve it, right? Now in this case, what you can actually tell is the throughput and speed. So the, uh, in fact, let me go back to the portal again and show you. So if you see over here, the copy data activity, right? So here in case, uh, let's say I'm trying to copy the data from my SQL server to ADLS Gen 2. In this case, my source will become SQL server and my sync will become ADLS Gen 2, right? Now this copy will always be slow no matter what. So copy from on-prem to, uh, you know, your any cloud, any cloud will definitely be very slow. So this is something that you can, uh, you know, point out that this is something that you have faced and then how did you resolve it, right? Now, if you go to this particular settings option in the copy data activity, what you can suggest over here is that, uh, you know, you have set of parameters over here, which you need to understand. Now, the very first thing is enable staging. Like this is something that I'll try to tell you first. So if you click on this particular option of enable staging, it will ask you to link a store, storage account. So you can randomly, like I already have a storage account. So you, you could also, you know, just link your storage account over here. Then it will ask you for some particular path inside your storage account. Let's say I give a particular path over here, whatever the path is, right? Let's say I give this particular path, I click on OK. Now I click on enable compression. So what exactly it does is whenever it is trying to copy your data from on-prem, it will compress your files. It will compress your files and when loading it back into your ADLS Gen 2, it will decompress. So now what will happen, like half of your path is actually in the compressed mode, right? Your data transfer is in compressed mode. So because of that, the, uh, the speed of the data transfer will be very high, right? And uh, now, just because this compression and decompression is happening in between, Data Factory needs a staging layer, right? It just needs a storage account to store the files temporarily, right? Till the time it is trying to do copy activity, only till that time it will try to store the compressed files over here. So that is why it is asking you for a staging layer where it can store the compressed file and then it can decompress it while loading it into, let's say, any uh, storage. Right. So this compression and decompression will actually help you to improve the performance a lot. So this is one particular option that you can, uh, you know, tell the interviewer about. And then the, you know, another option is degree of copy parallelism. So just like data, uh, you know, I, 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 this might be uh, just an analogy. Uh, you know, just like you have degree of parallelism in Spark, right? Multiple threads. In the similar way, this is also the number of threads. So this is not, uh, this is a option where in case you are trying to do copy, uh, it will increase the number of threads that you are trying to do copy with. So you can keep it as 16, you can keep it as 32. And this is mostly a hit and trial option. There is no specific degree of copy parallelism, which is good for you. So which is good for everyone. So you need to actually check what degree of copy parallelism can actually suit you and based on that you can provide the value over here it can be 16 it can be 8 it can be 32 so once you provide the value and you run your pipeline you will actually see a huge lot of difference in the speed and similarly you have data integrations unit but uh, data integration unit is something like the number of cpus but if you see these data integration units do not have uh, you know, a very major performance improvement, but yeah, in some cases it might help. 
so mostly degree of copy parallelism and enabling the staging right compression and decompression that works pretty well so you need to understand that this is a very uh, you know important question because this actually tells how much you have worked on data factory right so thank you so much for being till here and do remember to like, sub subscribe and share to this particular channel and do let me know in case you have any doubts, any questions, any query in the comment section. Thank you so much for being till here.